Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. If you've been watching my channel, then you know that I've been recapping Portraits Artist of the Year, which is a series that appears on usually on the BBC, it's sort of British centered, and also Landscape Painter of the Year. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of concentrating on the Portrait Artist of the Year. And I, I am not a portrait painter. You can see a couple of portraits behind me. So I don't feel like I'm an expert in portrait painting. So I contacted somebody that I know online who is an expert. And this is someone who is, I'm not gonna say her name because I haven't asked permission, but this is somebody who is in that stratosphere. In that stratosphere are people who exhibit regularly, who win competitions, and, we, and I mean competitions for tens of thousands of dollars. She, she knows these people. She, she knows these people, she paints with these people. And so I wondered if she would answer some questions for me that would help guide me a little bit. So I thought I would share with you some of what she shared with me. First of all, one of the things that I noticed in this season three, which I'm almost finished recapping, I just uh, uploaded the semifinals. I haven't made a video of the finals yet. But I've noticed in this season that there is often not a resemblance to the sitter. And my question for her was, do you think there has to be a resemblance to the sitter for it to be a legitimate piece, especially in a competition? And she said, yes, absolutely. So I felt that way too, but I needed it confirmed by someone who knows more than I do. Um, so I'm going to continue to to mention that when I'm doing my recapping. It has to have some kind of resemblance to the sitter. I asked about the four hour constraint that happens in the competition. She thought that was a really good amount of time, although she thought, and I do agree with her on this too, that many people spend the four hours and inexplicably, and they end up oftentimes not, you know, they start off kind of fresh, and as they get closer to the four hours, things become stiffer and more detailed and, and, uh, and lose a lot of what was really exciting at the beginning. And I've thought if I did the program, I would probably end up doing four paintings. <laughs> you know, the four hours would not help me. They would, they would hinder me. Um, so she felt she, she probably would do two dur during that time. So I wondered about that. I just wondered about that time constraint from someone who, who was way more experienced than me. The other thing I had a question about was uh, what would make the judging better? Because one of the love-hate things uh, relationships that I have with this program is the judging. Now, two of the judges, one is a consultant and one is, I think, a historian. Those are the two women. And the male judge is a painter, a, a, an artist. Um, but we both felt that this program would really benefit from having judges that had some experience with time on paper, canvas, time on paper, time on canvas. It's, it's sort of like, oh, I was watching uh, something on YouTube. Yeah, it was, it was an old clip of Johnny Carson with um, Ebert, oh, I forgot their name, Siskel and Ebert, who used to be uh, movie critics. And Chevy Chase happened to be on the dais along with them. And, and he was there because the movie Three Amigos had just come out. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with Three Amigos, but it is hilarious. Uh, but Siskel and Ebert did not like the movie and in front of Chevy Chase shared that they did not like the movie and in in his cutting way at one point he said well uh, something to the effect of well what was the last movie you were in <laughs> you know and that's the same thing critics don't necessarily have um, experience and yet they see a lot of things. I guess that's where the experience comes from, from looking at a broad range of things. Um, but I think, I think uh, this program would benefit from not only judges that know something about painting or actually creating themselves, or people who have, um, or perhaps even have some rotating judges. So it's not the same people all the time, every single episode. Because I think by now we're starting to know their biases pretty well. Um, then I asked the question, because the conversation went on for a while. I always ask this question when I'm talking to people who are uh, much higher, higher regarded than I am. <laughs> I always ask the self-esteem question because I struggle with self-esteem. And um, 
she said something so funny, which I'm, I just take to heart. I said, well, what do you do about self-esteem? And I mean, especially when you're painting with these people who are, you know, the top, top of the field, top of their game. And she said, she thinks she's the greatest. And she said, I just think I'm the greatest. And I thought, you think you're the greatest? I go around most of the time thinking I'm barely making it. <laughs> but, she, but then with her self-awareness, it was so funny because she said, yeah, I'm the greatest. She said, I know I'm not. I'm not the greatest. Far from it. But I think I am. <laughs> and I thought, what a better attitude just to be... Um, you know, and she's very grateful as I am just to be in the, the, the game at all, to participate in any way. And, and that might also come from, uh, she said she didn't start painting until she was 50. And I didn't get to start painting, in, right, frankly, until I was 50. You know, it wasn't until I retired that I got to go full force into this. So I think it gives it sort of a, a sweetness. It does mean, however, that you're you, you, can't, you can't catch up. I mean, you think maybe you can catch up with people who've been doing this all their lives, but you know, you can't. There's no, there's no substitute for experience. Time on canvas, time on paper. The other thing that we both felt was that uh, the competitions in general, because she does enter competitions, competitions in general, and this is a com competitive show, do generally reward classical work sort of more photorealistic work or classical work. And that's certainly been true in this program as well. And we do recognize there is an important reason for that. The final prize is a commission that is going to be uh, in a gallery, in, you know, in a, not just a, I mean, a, a national gallery. And so it's really important that, it, that the artist chosen as the winner is capable of doing that kind of work, that kind of it's got to fit in, so to speak. So, um, so I thought that made a lot of sense too. We, we both struggle with the same things, you, you know, getting a likeness to somebody and then, you know, for one reason or another, as you paint for a while, you lose the likeness and you get it back. You know, that's one of the things I love about the program is it shows the struggle is real and it shows the really diverse ways that people try to attack the problem, you know, Everybody's sort of painting the same thing, and you get yet you get really different results, and that's that's really what I love about the program. Uh, one thing that I did like about this season that I just am finishing recapping se season three is they sent somebody home who was fantastic. The minute they came on, I thought, oh, they're going to win the whole thing, and they got rid of him like really really fast, and. I have to admit, it tilted me and made me feel like I don't, I don't like these judges anymore and, and at all. How could they do that? How could they do that? But um, then they rectified that when we got to the semifinals. They announced that he, they, had, they had reflected on it and they did bring him back. So there are seven f semifinalists rather than six because usually there's just one winner from each episode and each, there are six episodes. So there are seven in this particular semifinals. One of the other things that we talked about was that it's really important that uh, we don't know behind the scenes. We don't know how much time these people have before they're, they're well, they must have a schedule. Must, Landscape Painter of the Year is a little different because they're, then they're traveling somewhere. So they, you know, supposedly they don't know where they're going, but at some point they have to know where they're going. But um, Portrait Artist of the Year happens all in one set, one set place. They don't know who the models are gonna be. So that's a little bit different, but I don't know how much time they have to prepare. And, um, and I don't know what kind of day it is for them. It, it could be an absolutely, I'm sure it's an exhausting day, but I have no idea in terms of, the four hours is certainly is spent on the painting, but in that time, you know, how long is the day? I, you know, if I pack up my art supplies to go somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> it's a big deal <laughs> and I and I'm a watercolor painter so things you know paper is flat I don't have to worry about um, bringing tubes necessarily I've got my pal palette probably all uh, packed up but but it's a lot it's a lot to bring and I suspect and I know I would if I was competing I, I would have to use my easel although it looks like all the easels are exactly the same so they may not but certain things that I would just need that would make me feel like I was in my home painting and not not to get distracted by what's around me. So I wanna thank my friend for 
having that conversation with me because it was incredibly helpful. And I plan to continue recapping the program because I really do love the program. I really do. The other thing that the program does is it sort of gives me some inspiration. It, it, there'll be something I want to try or, you know, when I first began doing the recaps, I was uh, for every episode, I was painting my own entry, so to speak, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> not, not, I didn't consciously decide not to do it. But one thing about the recaps is it, um, those videos take a while to edit. I don't, I don't know what I would do with lots of portraits of celebrities. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. It depends. What I have done on the Portrait Artist of the Year series is when they have not been able to get a likeness, then I have taken a screenshot and done my own painting because I want to prove kind of to myself, is it possible to get a likeness from this? That's, that's kind of what I'm wondering. And so far I've, I, I have been able to do that. You know, the other thing that we talked about um, really briefly was what about the devices? Devices like um, the gridding and the camera and all that. She was mystified that people use those things because she's so accustomed to working from life. I don't work from life very much, if at all. So I'm a, I don't grid, but I am accustomed to working from photographs. And so um, I would probably use both. And I think most contestants do use both. So. Those are some thoughts about Portraits of Artists of the Year. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.